Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and I want to show you a project I've been working on and uh, some terrain that I've been building up using the Games Workshop terrain sets. And I have to say I've been very impressed by their actual terrain sets, their Bastion sets and their Imperial Sector, their Fortress of Redemption. And we just wanted to, I've just been wanting to build some more of this terrain for our tables. And so let me show you what I did. And this will be kind of a showcasing video, but I'm also going to do a bit of a tutorial of mistakes to avoid. So you're going to learn from my mistakes. I'm going to show you the mistakes I made on these buildings and how you can avoid them. So let's take a look. Here are the two buildings that I made using the Imperial Bastion kits. And so basically you have two ways to get the Imperial Bastion kit. You've got buying just like that, where it comes with the Bastion and the gun, or you can buy it as an Imperial Strong Point. This is a special order item, so it takes a little longer to get in. And there's two Imperial Bastions plus three Aegis defense lines, which means you get three quad guns as well. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know which one's a better deal. If you want the three Aegis defense lines as well, this is clearly the better price. But if you're just looking for the Bastions, I think it might be better just to buy the Bastion kits. But you can just compare prices at store.miniwargaming.com for yourself. Just remember, this is a special order item, so it takes a couple weeks to get in. This one is um, a regular stock item, so it ships out within a couple of days. So here's what you can do though. They are so easy to customize. So if you've ever seen a bastion, you know that it just looks like this. It's just this bottom piece connected to the center piece connected to the top. But they're actually designed to be easily modular and to build basically whatever you want. So this is my warm up piece. So basically it's two bastion kits, as you can see. They've been put together. You can see they, they fit perfectly. I didn't have to do any conversions to get them to fit underneath. And like, for example, the top piece, the, the flooring right there, it has that circle where you can put a weapon in, but it, you can reverse it and you can see it if we look in here. If you reverse it, then it doesn't have it. So you have a choice, do you want it or do you not want it? And so for example, on this one, because I knew that we would be um, having this piece sticking out, I didn't want a weapon to go there. I just wanted a weapon on the top. And then thankfully this one I did right. Um, half of the pieces like this come with slits for the fire slots and the other half don't. So you have to be careful to line them up. I, I was assembling this one last night. I was sitting on the floor. My son was on my lap because he's been running a fever. And um, so I was assembling it while he was watching cars. And so I wasn't paying attention. And unfortunately, this is kind of random whether or not they have fire, uh, fire points or not. And the other thing I did wrong on this one is I meant to reverse these, have them upside down but uh, I, because the weapons won't really fit on there. But I even thought right before I put them on, I gotta make sure I reverse these, and then I was distracted by the movie and put them on wrong. But it'll still look really good once it's all painted up. And so it's just awesome. You can see what I've been able to do. Very, very minor modifications. I had to cut a couple of these pieces just with clippers, just to make them fit properly. Uh, another mistake I made is you can see that there's a gap here. I'm gonna be able to fill that soon. There's actually a piece to go there. But when I, I spent a couple hours clipping all the parts off, I brought all the extra parts back into the office and I didn't realize that I hadn't clipped these parts off. So these gaps that you see, there's actually a piece in the kit for you to connect those. And uh, so that was a mistake by me, but the kits are actually made to be able to do this, to go together like this. And it's super easy to put together. Um, it can, there's, a bit, there's a bit problems with the gaps and stuff just because, like I said, I was on the floor and uh, doing this while a movie was playing and my son was sick. But still, if I'm able to do that on my second try while I'm really distracted, then think about what you could do. So you have a choice of whether you put the heavy bolter in there or whether you just have something else back there, so whether there's a gun or not. Um, this one, I still have to attach the doors, but this right here, you can see the access point. Here, let's put that into better light. There, there's the access point. It's just one piece glued on top of this piece. So it's just super easy. You can just look underneath. It's just one piece glued on top of that. I think each bashing kit comes with one. So this one is two bashing kits. This one is six bashing kits. It's pretty obvious to tell because when you look at it from the top, you got one, two, three, four, five, six tops. And there's actually a ton of leftover parts um, that I could then use in other things, such as making walls. The inspiration for these buildings came from the Warhammer 40k rulebook, the sixth edition rulebook, where they showcase a lot of really cool looking terrain. The Fortress of Redemption back here, Oh, and I'm not going to be painting these. Jordan is actually painting them. He's been painting up terrain for us here. He's uh, the one that works in the store. 
he's been using an airbrush to start working on the Fortress of Redemption. The Fortress of Redemption is an awesome kit. Oh, one of those pieces fell off. Gotta get these glued back on. But this kit also is very modular. It basically assembles into four pieces, but they're very modular in that you could you could assemble them differently than what we have here. For our first one, we just assembled it as a normal Fortress of Redemption. So basically the way this works, we got that piece there. Let me just move these around. Try not to shake the camera too much. Uh, this piece goes like this. I'm not gonna attach them perfectly right now. This piece goes right here. And then this piece goes right here. So there's your Fortress of Redemption. And the really cool thing about this one is the gun comes off for one thing. See, so you see this piece right here. Well, if we flip it over, you see that it's also the missiles. So basically, they come with two parts. So if you wanted to have the two missile launchers, then you could actually assemble them that way. So there's the missile launcher right there. And it comes with two of these as well. It only comes with one gun, though. So if you wanted to have two guns, you'd have to start buying more kits. But if you actually look closely at all the terrain in the 40k rulebook, you'll notice that they basically use these kits and the Imperial Sector Kit, which is their ruined buildings. And the more I've looked at these kits, the more I've realized that they barely use any custom parts, that they just use their actual um, kits. Now, that's easy for them to do because obviously they get it at a lower cost than what even I get it at as a, as a store, and definitely lower than what you would get it at as a, as a customer. But it just shows you the potential of what you can do. Fantastic terrain when it's done, it looks great. So I can't wait to have these painted up. So like I said, the mistakes that I made on this one, that you should be careful not to repeat, pay attention to which ones have fire points and which ones don't, so that you can have some sort of order to them. Like you look from this side, you can see it, that has fire points and these don't. It just doesn't make any sense the way I did it. Make sure you have this facing the way that you want it to. Typically, if it's gonna be on a landing like this, you don't want it to have the weapon thing facing up because the weapon won't really fit on there. And uh, the other thing is to make sure that you use the pieces to fill these gaps, just like that. Other than that, the limit to what you can do is basically your pocketbook, how many of these you can buy, and then your imagination once you get past that hurdle. See, these things even move back and forth. So these will be featured. Now, if you're wondering if these look a little unbalanced for games, they're not meant for our normal just battle reports. We're going to be doing some narrative campaigns and some custom scenarios and everything where, where these are well, be meant to be unbalanced to provide some flavor to the actual game. So that's everything. So if you want to start building your own kits, then go on store.miniwargaming.com and you can buy the Fortress of Redemption or you can buy the individual Bastion kits or you can buy what's called the Imperial Strong Point, which has a two Bastion kits and three Aegis defense lines. So that's everything for today. Let me know what you think about these kits. If you have kits that you've made, then make sure you uh, take pictures of them, post them on our forums or make videos and post them on our site so that other people can see what you've built and get inspiration from it as well. Terrain is probably one of the coolest part of this hobby I think. The models are important but if you have mo awesome looking models on a, a crappy board then it loses a bit of its of, of the satisfaction. But even if you have tabletop painted models on a really cool board with really neat terrain the whole game just comes alive. So stay tuned for even more battle reports. If you want to challenge us to a battle report by the way we have a new super easy way to do it. You go to miniwargaming.com slash challenge fill that out and you'll be able to challenge us to a battle report. Anyways, that's it for today. This is Matthew from Mini Wargaming. Happy Wargaming.